greetings in the name of Jesus. No doubt these are trying times or uh, sometimes even confusing, but here we go. Uh, I want to, as a person who over the last decade went from no tech to low tech, I want to thank Carol and Donna and others for helping to make this possible. Um, I visualize each of you all uh, from the Bible study. And so as I share these thoughts, I'm mindful of you. And you're in my prayers and my thoughts. Hope this is just a good time for us to, to reconnect. We've been looking at Romans. Apostle Paul writes his letter to the church in Rome, probably, like I said, from 56 to 57 AD. That'd be 23 plus years after Jesus' death and resurrection. Um, now, Paul himself has high hopes to visiting Rome on his way to Spain. Little did he know uh, when he was writing this letter that he would end up in Rome as a prisoner. Uh, we have said that this letter to the Roman Christian, Jew and Gentile, was basic Christianity. Uh, Paul's just to, to, uh, helping the early church to discover anew the teachings of Christ. Uh, this letter is not as personal and reflective as all of his other letters. Uh, as we've discovered in our reading, it's a lot more wordy, more difficult to read and understand, and especially for you and me, since we aren't Jewish Christians. But let's just dive into uh, uh, the text that's before us. Um, Paul, I think, had a pretty good understanding of, of Jesus' life and his teachings and his healing ministry. He got that over a uh, about a 12-year period from the time he had his conversion on the road to Damascus to his first missionary journey. And so he remembers, as we remember, how Jesus said, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to. If you want to follow me, deny self, take up your cross. Jesus also said, the first shall be last and the last first. And he said real clearly that he came to serve, not to be served. So for you and me, as we are on this faith journey with Jesus, he's asking us to move from, self from selfish to selfless. We do this when we think of others. Paul knew of these teachings. Uh, and the, we had in the first part of the Romans that we studied that he dedicated himself to, to emphasize our sinfulness, our need to be forgiven. And he said that all sin and all of us have fallen short. Um, we have no right uh, to be justified on our own, but Jesus justifies us. And he went on to say that we're justified, though, made right with God and with one another, through faith and by faith, by faith through grace. I believe that God's grace was most manifested in Jesus himself in his life, death, and resurrection. So our sinfulness requires you and me to, to come back to God and experience God's grace. Paul writes to, to the Roman church, um, about this and remember the first two three chapters he spent almost the whole time talking about our shortcomings our sinfulness our pronation to judgment and so here in this season of lent uh, we've been uh, emphasizing confession repentance forgiveness self-denial self-control uh, these are all evident in the letter to romans when we say we confess we're saying we're sorry because we just keep on sinning. We turn back to Jesus, or back to the Lord, and we say that's our repenting, our turning around. And then we thank God for forgiving us. It helps you and me to, then this helps you and me to forgive one another. And then Paul will end his book by talking about the freedom that we have because of this new life in Christ. But Paul was good at um, reminding us that our faith journey is a process, that it's not necessarily linear, that we do the A, B, C, D, and we end up uh, at some point, but rather uh, life is a journey with Jesus. And so we sin, but then we, we confess, then we repent, and then we come back right with God, 
and then God helps us to be right with one another. So it's a process, a movement. Um, and our faith, Paul makes it clear, our faith is the vehicle to get on with this movement, to move into God's grace, saved by faith through grace. I love the fifth chapter, and we're going to just take a few moments and read that to bring our time together to a close. Paul writes, Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access. Faith, Jesus, we now have access to God, and we stand firm with that. Right, and he then writes, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Uh, that process of faith to, to wholeness uh, includes, he says, suffering. And I think each of us suffer in different ways. So, you know, uh, how you suffer may be different from how I suffer. But when, we, when God sees us through those times, then we endure. That is, we live through it. And that's what Paul says, that's how our character is being built. From that, we have hope. And hope never disappoints. From, from this, Paul, uh, when he, he's now talking about you and me experiencing faith, faith brings us to this hope, to a joy, to a relationship that's right with others and with ourselves. And then in this fifth chapter, he goes on to, to um, let us know that Adam, that sin came into the world through Adam, and Christ is the new Adam, and he goes into that wonderful description. But let's just close our time together, and then next week I'd like for us to look more specifically at the 8th chapter of Romans. So look at the 5th chapter on your own. And let's remember how Jesus said, faith comes from hearing, and hearing comes from the word of God. So in these days of Lent, beyond, let's stay close to God's word, grow in our faith, and experience God's amazing grace as we continue to have deep roots producing bountiful fruit. Amen.